Hey guys, it's Mr. Ray here with our next lesson in grade 11 university math. We are working in the exponential functions unit today and uh, we're going to continue on with working with our expressions uh, with exponents. Uh, so far we've learned how to handle negative integer exponents and last lesson we learned how to handle uh, rational exponents. In other words, uh, exponents that look like fractions. So uh, today's lesson is kind of combining everything we've done with exponents and coming up with some more complicated uh, expressions to simplify and, and uh, evaluate. So you'll see that these are a little step above what we saw uh, in the last lessons where we're just learning how to apply, how to work with uh, negative integers and rational exponents. So, um, same old definitions, power base exponent. Um, now, so we're going to use all sorts of rules. We're going to use the exponent laws that we've learned before. Uh, the fact that anything to the power of zero is one. We're going to learn how to handle negative exponents, or at least we're going to use how we handle negative exponents and also how we handle um, rational exponents or and also how do we convert uh, roots into exponents which is part of the rational exponents. Okay so um, I think the best way to to go about this is just to dive in and uh, to get some practice here. So It's uh, rational in terms we've got a numerator, a denominator. We've got uh, two different variables, x and y, uh, coefficient on the top. We also have exponents applying to the expressions on the top and above. So um, hopefully going through this will show you what order we should uh, con uh, attack this problem. So the first thing that I would do would be to apply the exponents outside the bracket to both the top and the bottom. So the uh, important thing to realize is that exponent 3 is not just affecting the y squared, it's affecting the x to the negative 3 and it's also affecting the 2. So each part of this term has to have that exponent 3 applied to it. So I'll kind of do it the longer way this time. So I'll show you that the 2 gets the 3 exponent applied to it. Um, I'm also going to apply th the 3 here to the x to the negative 3. So remember this is power of a power rule now. So we're not adding these two, we're multiplying these two. So the new version of the x part of the term will be x to the negative 9 because negative 3 times 3. And then the y squared also gets the 3 to apply to it using power of a power rule power of a power rule, so that is y to the 6, because it's 2 times 3. Uh, we do the same on the bottom. Apply the, the exponent 2, both to the x cubed and to the y to the negative 4. So power of a power will multiply, so that's x to the 6, and y to the negative 8. Okay, so we've got rid of the brackets, we've got rid of the outside exponents, so what should we do next? So what I would do, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to evaluate what 2 cubed is for sure. Um, so that, I guess that would be the first thing I do. I'm going to put that as an 8, leave it where it was. I can't move that around. It's got to be on the top. Um, now, what I like to do is kind of group. Uh, well, I already can see that I've only got 1x to a power on the top and 1x to a power on the bottom. Same thing for the y. If I had multiple occurrences of y to a power I would, or x to a power, I would combine them so that I only have one x and one y. Okay, but I've already got that, so I don't have to do anything here. Um, so there's a couple of ways to go about this. Uh, I'm going to look at the x parts above and below, and the y parts above and below, and, and look at them. Okay, now, it's not a very straight line. Let me redo that. Give myself a bit more room too. So I've got my 8. Okay, now 
the way I'm going to do this the first time, I'm going to actually use my quotient rule here. And I know that my x term, and I'm going to write this on top, okay? Uh, because I'm going to use this as where I'm calculating from. So it's going to be x to the negative 9 and then minus the 6. Okay, and I've, I've now taken care of that x to the 6. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Then I'm going to combine these two y's. So I got y to the power of 6 uh, minus negative 8. And since I've already handled everything on the bottom, I really don't have anything left. I could just maybe remove the division bar or I could put a 1 under temporarily. doesn't really matter. Does just don't leave it blank because teacher might think you forgot something. Um, so now at this point, still going to leave my 1 on the bottom. Combine these exponents. So I've got 8x to the negative 15 and y to the positive 14. Sorry, that's not right. Hold on. Uh, 6 minus 8. Yes, that is right. Um, so y to the 14. Um, and I've still got my 1 on the bottom. Now, the only thing that's wrong with this, every time you evaluate or simplify one of these expressions, you never want to leave it with negative uh, exponents. So we have to fix uh, this x to the negative 15. The y to the 14 is fine. The x, the 8 is fine. Um, but i got to fix this. Now what you could do, and I don't want you to do, is write this as 1 over x to the power of 15. And eventually it's going to find its way down here. Here is a trick. It's not really a trick. It's a technique that's going to save you a lot of time. If you see something that's got a negative exponent on the top and it's just a you're just multiplying with some other things up here you can move that to the under to the bottom here and the the sign will flip to positive okay so that's exactly what i'm going to do so the 8 stays there the y to the 14 stays on the top but the x to the negative 15 moves down to the bottom and becomes x to the 15 so that's that's a nice little technique that always works. And, but you have to make sure that it's just a series of multiplications on the top and bottom. If you have any plus or minus symbols in between these expressions, you can't do it that way. But most of the time you'll see that it, it will work for, for grade 11 math. Okay. Um, uh, the opposite works true too. If I, for some reason, if I ended up with a, you know, say a z to the negative 2 on the bottom, I could just move that up to the top, and as soon as I cross that division bar line, the sign of the exponent changes, and it don't, you know, you always want to move it if it's negative, leave it where it is if it's positive, so that it works in both directions. Crossing that, crossing that division bar will change the sign of the exponent, okay? All right, so let's try this one here. This one looks a little scary. <clears throat> and we're going to actually do this two ways because it's saying evaluate this expression for x equals negative 3 and n equals 2. So what they really want you to do is replace x with negative 3, replace n with 2, and find out what this number really is. So there's two ways, about, uh, ways of doing this. I'm going to show you both and then Hopefully you'll come to your own conclusion as to which way you should do it. Um, so the first way, I'm actually going to do my substitution. So I'm going to put this as method one. Okay, so this is where I replace everything. So I've got here on the top, I got uh, a negative three to the power two plus two. Sorry, not 2 plus 2, 2 times 2, because n is 2, 2 times 2 plus 1, and then multiply that with negative 3, um, 3 times 2 minus 1. Should have left myself some more room here. Um, and then on the bottom, we've got x, so again, negative 3 
to the 2 times 2 minus 4, sorry, minus 5, 2 times 2 minus 5. Okay, so now we're going to simplify all these exponents first. So on the top we've still got negative 3 to the power of 5. We're going to multiply that with negative 3 to the, that's going to be 6 minus 1, which is 5. And then on the bottom I've got negative 3. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 5 is negative 1. Okay, and then I kind of do what I, I did before. So I've got, notice these are all the same bases, so I could actually use product rule here, quotient rule with the one on the bottom. So I'm going to come up with one term with base negative 3, because they all have base negative 3, um, and it's going to be 5 plus 5, and then minus negative 1, which of course will change its sign, and that's going to be equal to negative 3 to the power 11. Okay, that was a little tricky, not too bad, but let's see the other method. So you can see our approach here was just don't worry about what this is, just plug in x equals negative 3, negative 2, and then simplify. So it's substitute then simplify. Here we're going to do the opposite. We're going to we're going to simplify and then substitute. So if I'm simplifying, um, right away I see. Well, look at that. They all have the same base of x um, and different exponents. So I'm just going to start start off with one base x. I'm going to add these exponents together and then subtract this exponent. So I have to be a little careful, but it will work. So I've got 2n plus 1, so that's an exponent by the way. Then I'm going to add 3n minus 1. And then I'm going to subtract this exponent. So you notice I put brackets here, because when you subtract, it, crazy things can happen to the signs. So minus 2n minus 5. So now I just have to simplify this whole thing. So I can actually do that in one step. I've got 2n plus 3n, that's 5n. 5n minus 2n is 3n. Okay, and then the number parts, I have 1 minus 1, so that's 0 now, minus negative 5, that would be plus 5. Okay, so just like that, I've managed to simplify this pretty complicated looking expression into something much simpler looking. Now that I've simplified, now I will substitute. So here's where I change x to negative 3 and n to 2. So it'll be 3 times 2 plus 5. And just like that I get negative 3, 6 plus 5 is 11. So you can see I got the exact same answer. Which one was quicker? I would definitely say this one. So, uh, do you want to substitute then simplify, or simplify then substitute? This is almost always the best option. Um, especially if maybe there's a part B to this question that said then, okay, now, sub, now change x to 4 and, and to 3. Well, if you didn't do the simplifying first, you'd have to go through this whole process all over again. Whereas if you simplified first, well now I'm just going to change uh, change my x and my n at this point. So it's a lot less work. Okay, so that's uh, something to consider. All right, so now we have our next uh, simplification of a expression with powers. And you can also see here uh, we have our first occurrence of a rational exponent. We've got one third and one half here. Okay. So just like we did with our first example, the first thing I'm going to do is process the power on the outside of the of the big brackets on both the numerator and denominator. So uh, if you remember, whatever the exponent is applies to applies to the 27, applies to the a, and applies to the b. And here the one-half exponent applies to the 16, to the a, 
and to the B. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So um, I can write 27 to the one third. And then A to the negative 3 to the one third. That's basically a power of a power. So that's negative 3 times a third. So that's going to be negative A to the negative 1. And then the B will be 12 times 1 third, which is 4. Okay. Now we do the same thing on the bottom. Apply the exponent 1 half, first of all, to the 16. Uh, apply it to the 8. So, sorry, the A. So it's going to be A to the negative 8 times 1 half. So that's A to the negative 4. And B to the... 12 times a half, that's going to be 6. Okay. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do, and you won't have to do this every time once you get used to doing this, the the exponent one-third, if you remember from last lesson, that that's basically, uh, that means the cube root of this. So, I'll write, I'll write it down this time, but you don't have to do this every time. just want to show where it comes from. So the cube root of 27, and the bottom we've got square root of 16. Okay, now what I'm going to do here, it's related to what I talked about on the previous page. Um, I have a series of multiplications here, and I've got two, my exponents for b are, are, are positive. These exponents are negative. So you don't have to do it this way, but I can basically take each of these and move them to the opposite side of the division. If I move the a to the negative 1 to the bottom, it just becomes a to the 1. If I move a to the negative 4 to the top, it becomes a to the 4. That's exactly what I'll do. So that's the result of, of doing that flip. The, the b's I can just leave where they are. And now I'm just working with positive exponents. Now, you don't have to do this the way I did it. You could simply do the subtraction and work with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to calculate the cube root of 27. I know that's 3, and I also know the square root of 16 is 2. So I've got those two numbers, top and bottom. Now what I'm going to do is look at the a's separately and look at the b's and combine them into 1. So I've got a to the fourth over a to the power 1. So if I'm doing uh, the quotient rule, it's going to be a to the 4 minus 1, which is a cubed. The other way you can look at it is uh, I've got three more multiplications of a up here than down here, so I'm left with a cubed. Um, here I've got, they're both positive, but you can see the bigger exponent, 6, is on the bottom. So you could, again, you can do this these a number of ways, and I'm certainly open to lots of different methods here as long as they're correct. Um, you could do the subtraction 4 minus 6 is negative 2 and write b to the negative 2 here. Or you could start from this side and just go, okay, this is the bigger side. I'm going to do my subtraction upside down and the result will go on the bottom. So if that's the case, it's going to be b. And then I do my quotient rule upside down. So it's 6 minus 4 is 2. Okay. Now, if you did it without doing the upside-down quotient rule, if you did the right-side-up quotient rule, uh, you'd have an exponent 4 minus 6 on the top, which is actually b to the negative 2. You could write b to the negative 2, and then on your next step, you bring it down to the bottom as b to the positive 2. So I'm just trying to save a little bit of time, but if you want to take more steps to be safe, that's totally fine. Okay, let's try this one here. See lots of... Let me zoom in so you can see it a bit better. Okay, so we've got on the top, we've got the fifth root of x to the power 8 over square root of x cubed, all cubed. Okay, so the first thing we do when we want to simplify exponential slash radical expressions is put everything into numerical exponents. So if I see a... Um, a radical, I'm, I'm going to change it. First thing I do is change it into exponent form. And everything here is going to be cubed. 
so I don't forget. Now on the top, I've got the fifth root of x to the eight. So remember the fifth root really means to the power one fifth. So uh, the way you could look at this as, and again, I'll do it slightly longer way today, x to the eight to the power one fifth. And on the bottom I've got x cubed. And since that's a square root, that's like the exponent one half. So this would be like x cubed to the one half. <clears throat> now, this is like a power of a power rule on steroids here. We've got power of a power of a power. So how does that work? Well, it works exactly the same as if it was just two. You can just multiply all three of them together to get the new exponent for the top. Multiply all three of these to get the new exponent on the bottom. So um, I'll write that out first to show you where the number came from. So it's x to the eight times one fifth times three. Okay, and that, you see the three is gone now because I've actually applied it as that last number there. Then on the bottom, we've got x, x to the power of three times one half times three. Okay, so let's do the math here to get the new exponents. So eight times one fifth, that's eight fifths. Eight fifths times three, that's 24 fifths. So scary looking fraction. On the bottom, I got three times one half, that's three halves times three is nine halves. Okay, now I can see I've got the same base X top and bottom. Um, this, I can apply the quotient rule here and the result will be x to the 20. I'm going to subtract these two to get the new power, new exponent. Because I don't need my division bar anymore because I'm combining them. So that's going to be x to the power 24 fifths minus 9 halves. Now, problem, let me zoom out a bit, it's getting a little big. Um, problem here is I'm doing fraction math but I don't have the same denominator so it's it's not going to be it's not going to work so I have to have a common denominator before I can combine these and that common denominator is going to be 10 so 24 fifths is the same as 48 over 10 multiply top and bottom by 2 and if I want to make that over 10 multiply the top and bottom by 5 so I get 45 over 10 and now I can subtract them 48 tenths minus 45th tenths, that's going to be equal to x to the 3 tenths. Okay, so a lot of teachers would say, okay, that's that's great, that's your final answer. Um, I'm a little bit pickier because I like, not only do I not want to see negative exponents in, in your final answer, I don't want to see fraction exponents in your final answer, so I need you to change this to radical form. So uh, I can see that you know that's going to be x cubed to the power one tenth. The power one tenth means the uh, the tenth root. So the way I write the tenth root is put the radical sign here, put a little ten in the, in the little sleeve there, and then inside I've got x cubed. So that would be the final answer. Um, and you could actually write this in a slightly different way. You could write, uh, well, let me just show it here. Or you could write it as cube root of, sorry, not cube root, tenth root of x, all cubed. You can see this way is a little bit simpler to write. This would probably be the way you evaluate it, though. You always like to take the root before you apply the integer exponent. Okay, but either of these would be acceptable for simplifying that question. Okay, so that is it for the lesson. You can see some of the questions are a little tricky. Um, some of the recommendations I made doing those examples, I would uh, try to remember them. Um, whenever you have a question like the, you know, the one we had here where you have a mixture of 
uh, radicals and powers, you want to convert the radicals to exponents before you do any simplification. It's pretty much impossible to do any simplification unless you convert the roots into exponents. And then at the end, once you get uh, a, a rational uh, exponent, convert that back to a radical. So you can see you've, you've converted to rational, done all your simplifying, and then finally convert back to radical. Okay, so that's that's what I highly recommend you doing. Um, so we've finished the first part of this unit where we look at exponents. Um, the last three lessons of the unit will be looking at uh, exponential functions. So in the next lesson, we'll be looking at some of the properties of rational expressions, what the graphs look like, what the equations look like. So until then, have a great day and take care.